Hello there, myth and history lovers. This is Mr. P of Mr. P's Mythopedia here, and today I have a mythological, historical, and artistic treat for you directly from the extremely capable and multi-talented hands of the ancient Greeks themselves. Even more specifically, I suppose you could say from their gods. When it came to art, the Greeks had a lock on many unique forms of expression from their architecture, which is all around us today. All you have to do is go to Washington, D.C. or look around locally and you'll see it. Their science and inventions, their philosophy, and most importantly, their sculpted and painted art, which allows us to see just how they saw the world, their ideas of beauty, and how they believed it all worked. There is a huge amount of detail you can get about a civilization based on the artwork they leave behind for future generations to check out, and the Greeks left us a treasure trove of it. Museums around the world showcase their finely detailed sculpture, which allows us to see what they really truly believed about the human form. They thought it was a gift by their gods in the earliest of times. Finely crafted jewelry, which adorned the hands, necks, and bodies of both men and women, show us what their ideas of fashion were like. And even household items still remain relatively intact for us to check out their daily lives. But one of the most unique of all the artwork passed down to us by the ancient Greeks has to do with a special kind of pottery called an amphora. An amphora, or amphorae in the plural, was a large clay-bait container that was used to hold all sorts of different substances, from olive oil, water, flour, and wine. Traders carried hundreds of these amphorae around with them. We have proof of that from the almost countless shipwrecks of ancient Greek triremes that litter the seabed of the Mediterranean Sea today. And some of those amphorae still have traces of what was in them all those thousands of years ago. Amphorae were like the ancient equivalent of Tupperware. You could use them and reuse them for just about everything. But the Greeks went one step beyond in the usefulness of the amphora. They upped the game. Because really, who wants a boring brown clay container? Instead, using brilliant and vibrant oranges, yellows, reds, and blacks, all homemade paints using different minerals and oils, ancient Greek painters put down beautiful scenes upon their amphorae. Outdoor scenes of ordinary people doing their everyday thing. Nature scenes of the outdoors. Anything you could think of and there was probably an amphora with that painted upon it in amazing detail. The most popular thing to paint and showcase in all their glory were the Greek Olympian gods. Heroes, creatures, and otherworldly beings that were a part of their religion. Battles and scenes from the huge catalog of Greek legends and myths were painted to honor their gods all without modern technology, brushes, or 3D computer imaging. Some of these special amphorae were used in special ceremonies for different gods, and some were even used to put the ashes of cremated ancestors, priests, kings, or other special folks who may have warranted it. And the cool thing is, thousands of years later, we still have them, in all of their glossy and vivid coloring, a testament to the might and power of the gods and goddesses of Olympus. Now, for the rest of this video, I've gone ahead and picked out some of my favorite amphorae, most of which depict those same mythological beings, just to give you an idea of just how much is out there. We'll even give you a little Greek music to go along with it while you enjoy their beautiful and creative testaments to self-expression. So we'll settle in for the next few minutes, marvel at the beauty of the Greek amphorae of the gods, and we'll see you on the other side.
And there they are, only a few of the hundreds of examples of Greek mythology-based amphorae out there, in all their exquisite and bright colors, telling the legendary tales we all know so well today, as few as a few of the fragments of those we still don't have the full story on. Yes, it's totally true that we have pieces of amphorae that show gods and goddesses that have little mention in the written tales that have been passed on to us. For example, this amphora, which shows the epic Greek hero Heracles apparently ready to bash in the skull of Jairus, the god of old age. No one knows where Heracles encountered the elderly god in his travels, or why he wanted to brain him with his war club, but this amphora shows at least that part of the tale. Sadly, that's all we've got. Hopefully somewhere out there, and under the ground in and around the Greek world, there are more which might show us what the son of Zeus and the god of old age had to throw down over. Maybe it actually shows Heracles overcoming old age itself. Only time will tell. As an extra added bonus, I wanted to make you all aware of an interesting video game out there that actually uses Greek M4 art as the basis for the animation, plot, and gameplay. It's called Apotheon, and the graphics you encounter throughout the game make it look very much like you are traveling through and interacting with the figures shown within many m from antiquity. Pretty excellent stuff. I can't say much on the plot and how it all turns out, though it plays like an alternative Olympian era, where the gods have abandoned the humans of Greece, very different from the actual events laid down in mythology. You'll have to make the call for yourself. Check out the game uh, at the link in the, in the description below that would be on Steam, as well as one or two links to gameplay. On that note, I hope you enjoyed this little journey through Greek mythology, focusing on the beautiful and extremely detailed amphora art shown in the presentation. If you're an educator listening to this, feel free to use this video in class for the enjoyment of your students. And if you really dig mythology, legends, and other supernatural weirdness, feel free to subscribe to this channel for more, or come visit my other project, Mr. P's Mythopedia, at the links provided in the video description. Thanks, and we'll see you all again real soon with another spoken tale of ancient awesomeness.